All right, what is going on guys? So, today's video, um, I'm gonna be doing how to cast a bait caster reel uh, because I've been requested this quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd make it, give my few tips that I might have. Um, so yeah, I just came down to test this lure out that I'm able to see how it swims. So I thought I might as well kill two birds with one stone, get this filmed. So I'm gonna switch over to the chest cam. I think it'll be you know better to show exactly what I'm doing with that. And yeah, hopefully, this helps you out, stops you getting some back backlashes and some birds nests and everything. So yeah, switch it over and you, see, you'll, you, you might learn how to do it, so. Right. right guys, so switched over to the old Chester. See how this lure swims first and foremost, which is why I'm here. Oh, not bad, not bad. Get off the side, because that weight's on its side. Sort this out. There we go, that should be sound. Right, so, casting a bait caster. To be honest, it's quite difficult to learn. And once you've learned it, it's really easy. <laughs> uh, I barely get backlashes anymore. Like maybe one every week, maybe, if that, if I'm fishing quite a lot. So, yeah, I will say, different lures, are uh, easier to cast hard to cast obviously you've got you, the the, uh, the problem you have with the bait caster which is what causes the backlash is when your lure slows down in the air so say you cast it as hard as you can and that's going through the air at 20 miles an hour obviously the line's coming straight off your spool your spool's spinning so that's going at 20 mile an hour as well uh, when that starts slowing down in the air your spool keeps going at the same speed putting out more line than your lure's pulling um, and then obviously that causes it to overspool so yeah to stop that it's all about your thumb cast it you notice it's slowing down but a little break on it with your thumb if you feel like you might be starting to overspool that's the main issue a lot of people because when you're bait casting it's all about your thumb your thumb is everything hold it when you're starting you stop it with your thumb a lot of people, you don't feather the thumb at all, and that's uh, something that you really need to be doing, feathering it with your thumb. So, yeah, I'll show you from start to finish because I've kind of started in the middle of it now. <laughs> so, do your casting. You have two brakes. I'm not going to take it off because I've not got a screwdriver. You've got an internal magnetic brake on most reels. You can crank, when you first get your bait caster, crank that up to full. Another brake right here crank that one right up to full as well I have mine as loose as it can go usually but yeah you crank that up to full what that does slows how your lure drops right down so because you're not going to be used to feathering it with your thumb but there's no there's zero chance of that over spooling you're not going to be able to cast far but even if I don't stop it it's not going to over spool so when you start that's definitely what I do. Crank your brakes right up to the max. There's no, there's no way with your max brakes that you'll overspool. Some reels you might, but you shouldn't do. As soon as that hits the water, your spool will stop because you get your brakes on high. When you've done a few casts, you spent maybe 10, 15 minutes fishing with your spool tight, just getting used to the action of actual casting. You want to start knocking it off a little bit. Take it off a couple of clips. Your lure will fall faster. And you'll see it now. Well, not that time. I didn't knock it off enough. But <laughs> when, you, when you've knocked it off, you know, enough. When that hits the water, your spool will start. It will continue spinning. So you're going to have to start feathering it with your thumb. A little bit more so I can show you. So we've knocked that off a bit more now. So cast that out when that lure starts to slow down when it hits the water. Boom, spool. See the spool keeps spinning. That is how backlashes happen. I still have my brake on quite a lot then, so it wasn't too bad. But if you uh, don't have your brake on, 
it will do it big time so definitely start with a heavy brake and to stop that all you need to do pretty simple keep your eye on the lure when it's sort of reached its distance you're probably like 10 15 foot above the water if it's quite a long cast just start feathering it with your thumb don't slam your thumb on there it's like thinking of your car brake when you're slowing down to a junction you slowly press your brake come to a nice slow stop that's sort of what you want to do just feather it slowly with your thumb Press that again like so stops it perfect cast of that far bank there <laughs> That's the beauty of bait casters, they're so easy to cast. Once, you, once you've figured them out, they're so easy to cast exactly where you want them to. Um, yeah, I'll see if I can show you a proper overspool. I'm not sure I'd have to do it with this reel. But. No brakes, no brakes. Yeah, it's not going to proper overspool because you've got thick braid. Another top tip, when you're learning, definitely start with thick line this is 0.35 mil uh, which is pretty thick for what a lot of people would use I only use this because I'm using big lures for pike um, but yeah if you're starting off I'd probably recommend th thick mono sort of 15 pound mono um, reason being you will you will definitely birds nest no matter how careful you are because um, you, you'll get confident you'll get cocky and then, then uh, yeah, your bird's nest. But uh, thin braid is ridiculously hard to pick out. When I first started, when I got my first bait caster, um, I put 20 pound braid on it, did a cast, backlashed, couldn't pick it out, had to cut it off, finished fishing session, and then didn't pick it up for another year. So, you know, that put me straight off, and that's what puts a lot of people off. So I'd start with thick mono. Mono is your easiest to cast with a baitcaster. Then fluorocarbon, if you've got you know an actual mainline fluorocarbon, not using leader material, and thicker braid. Hardest thing to use is thin braid. Until you're used to it. But yeah, your thumb's your best friend when you're baitcasting for sure just make sure you keep, keep your if you're if you're doing a big cast obviously when you're first learning I'd just I'd just be doing short casts like this just learning to slow it down and if, if you're on a canal or something like this you can keep you know, edging slightly further each time just using your thumb to feather it And yeah, honestly, when you when you when you've spent, it, it is it is hard for the first month or so, depending on how much you fish. But when you've spent a good amount of time learning, it gets really easy, <laughs> really easy and really fun. And uh, yeah, to cast accurately, it's quite simple. Look at your target. Say, I want to cast in line with that post. See that post with the yellow. Cast in line with that as close to the far bank as possible. Keep your eye on your target, cast so you'd be able to cast further, just keep your eye on your lure, feather it and then you'll be able to spot, spot land that right where you want. Boom, a couple of foot off, well, that's not bad. This canal's about 20 meters wide, so it's not a bad cast. And if you wanted, if you wanted to drop it into uh, little pockets in the weed, once you've mastered it, it's, it's uh, so much easier than a spinning spool. It's all about that thumb, all about keeping your eye on that lure. And just, uh, yeah, awareness, awareness of what you're doing. And you pick that up just naturally from doing it. But uh, when you first get your bait caster, I definitely recommend not going out with the intention of catching fish but go out purely to learn how to cast because it is a skill it's something you need to learn 
and uh, yeah, it can take a bit of time. But that is about it, I think. I've probably missed some stuff out. But uh, yeah, that's essentially it. Once you've mastered, once you've mastered your typical casting, you know, you can start casting really quick. You know, get a lot more casting through the day. Start pitching it underhand. It's a really good way to get into tight spots. Drop it into areas where you uh, see fish. If you ever need to pitch it off your hand, you can pitch it straight off the rod tip. Get in that same spot exactly where you want it. Very much. If you if you if you enjoy fishing, you do a lot of low fishing. If you're not using a bait caster, you are missing out big time because it's so much more fun fishing. You can get more casts in. Oh, I thought I had a bite then. I think it was just bomb. Oh, I've got a stick on it. Oh, swan muscle shell. Um, what were I saying? Yeah, it's so much more fun to fish with a casting rod and reel. You can get a lot more casts in. You don't need to set up like with a spinning one where you, you know, you grab your line, you put your put your bail arm over and everything, and uh, yeah, it's simple. Just your thumb. You do it one-handed if you want. Do it two-handed. It's entirely up to you. So yeah, hope that's been helpful anyway. Kind of waffled a bit. Definitely probably missed some bits out, but you're then this. <laughs> That's your essentials to casting with a bait caster. Right guys, just gonna do a quick little overview of start to finish how to cast. So you have your drop, probably about the same as what you'd have on a spinning rod. That's your that's your distance between your rod tip and your bait. Um, thumb on the spool, press the clutch in with like the middle of your thumb, and then you're gonna release your line at the peak of your cast, feather it down, spot your landing. Bang, spot it, no overspool. Job's a good one. Bang. Can't ask for a better cast than that. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So hopefully that has been helpful. And uh, yeah, let me know if you want me to do any more how to's. I'm not very good at stuff, just kind of make it up, but. Yeah, if you think if you think it can be helpful, let me know and uh, catch you guys in the next video. All right, so I forgot to mention what setup I've got here. I've uh, got Westin Powercast T, uh, eight foot three, sixty to one hundred eighty gram casting weight. So it's like three ounce to uh, no, it's not. So that's like two ounce to um, six ounce casting weight. So for big fish, big lures. Um, Akuma, Komodo, three, six, four size. Stainless steel bearings and that, real nice reel. Holds a lot of line, because it's quite a thick line. 0.35 mil spider wire stealth, rated at 90 pound, but I don't think it's 90 pound. Um, and yeah. That is the setup. Pretty nice, not too expensive. Rod's about hundred pounds, hundred and thirty dollars ish. Real, two hundred pounds. Quite an expensive reel actually. About two hundred pound, two hundred and fifty dollar maybe. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's a nice setup. Catches a lot of fish. Casts like a dream, like you even, you saw earlier in the video took the brake right off and it still wouldn't overspool for me so that's the difference between a cheap reel and an expensive one I know if you're just starting bait casting you're going to be using a cheaper reel but uh, yeah when you get into it and you upgrade you'll definitely notice that difference of a good reel big fish big snag but yeah Thought I'd add this at the end, since I forgot to mention it. So that is the end of the video. Now I'm snagged. And I will. Oh, there we go. I will catch you uh, in the next one.